these are the bones of the hand. We start with the carpus. The hand is a useful apparatus in man for prehensile and bracketing activities. The palm is the fleshy part of the hand placed ventrally. Layer 1 of the palm contains skin divided into the following parts. Tenor eminence, hypothenar eminence, mid palmar area, and the pulp of the fingers. On the skin of the palm, we have the following creases. Transverse creases, proximal digital creases, middle digital creases, and distal digital creases. In sum, this layer contains skin with transverse creases, proximal digital creases, middle digital creases, distal digital creases, hypothenar eminence, tenor eminence, fingers, and pulp of the fingers. To recap, we have removed the skin and its constituent parts, such as the skin of the roof of the thinner space, hypothenal space, mid palmar space, and the structures below the skin, which includes the superficial fascia. Palmar branches or medial and ulnar nerves. Proper digital nerves. Palmar digital veins. Palma venous plexus. In sum, we have exposed the superficial fascia, which includes the following structures. The palmar branches of radial and all the nerves, together with the lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm, the proper digital veins, the palmar digital veins, and the palmar venous plexus. The layer of superficial fascia contains the following structures. We have now reached the palmar aponeurosis layer. Removal of the superficial fascia exposes the palmar aponeurosis. It also exposes the flexor retinaculum and also the fibrous flexor sheath. But in this layer, we shall see the palmar aponeurosis and the structures we surround it. To reach this layer, we have removed the superficial fascia, the palmar venous plexus, and the proper digital veins. We can now see the palmar aponeurosis, digital nerves, and vessels. The roof of the thinner space has now been removed to expose the structures underlying it. At this stage, we can only see two muscles, a doctor policies brevis and the flexor policies brevis. In the hypothenal space, we can only see the abductor digiti minimi. In sum, we have exposed the palmar aponeurosis, common digital nerves and vessels, then a space which contains two muscles at this stage, abductor policies brevis and flexor policies brevis, the ulnar artery, and the hypotenar space which contains only one muscle, the abductor digiti minimum. Layer 3 contains the following structures.
we have now arrived at the layer of superficial palmar ash. After the removal of the plantar aponeurosis and the common digital nerves and vessels. We can now see clearly the mid palmar space containing the blood vessels of the superficial palmar arch and nerves. Flexor retinaculum is also clearly seen. The numbicals, which arise from the radial side of the flexor digitorum profundus can be clearly seen. The fibrous flexor sheets for each finger can also be clearly seen at this level. So also is the median nerve. And the superficial branch of the ulnar artery. And the superficial branch of the radial artery. Together, they form the superior palmar arch. In sum, we have exposed this layer, which contains the fibro fibrous pleasure sheath, lumbricals, superficial palmar arch, which contains superficial branch of the ulnar artery, superficial branch of the radial artery, and the median nerve. This is layer 5, the layer of superficial flexor tendons. Please check all items on the web page links. To recap, we have removed superficial palmar arch, proper digital nerves and vessels, and the median nerve. Please use the dissector to interact with all the links. And over flexor sheet surrounds all the flexor tendons, in particular the ulnar bossa, which is the bossa that surrounds all the flexor tendons together with the flexor tendon of the little finger. The tendons include flexor digitorum superficialis, which is superficial tendons of the long flexor and the flexor digitorum profundus, which is found only minimally in this layer. The flexor digitorum takes its origin from a common flexor origin and from other structures surrounding this origin and runs downwards on the cover of the flexor retinaculum to reach the palm at the mid palmar space. It reaches the palm at the mid palmar space with its tendons which gain their attachment or insertion by splitting into two to accommodate the tendons of its deep neighbor the flexor digitorum profundus. They gave their insertion into the base of the middle phalanges. While the superficialis is supplied in its entirety by the median nerve, the profundus has two nerves which supply it, with its honor head being supplied by the ulnar nerve and the radial part by the median nerve through its anterior interosseous branch. The radial bossa is the synovial flexor sheath that surrounds the flexor pollicis longus, which is placed on the thumb. The long flexor takes their origin from the common flexor origin at the medial epicondyle of the humerus. The flexor pollicis longus takes its origin from the front of the radius and it is found in the radial bossa. 
we have now seen the last of the short muscles of the thumb, which is the opponent's policies. In the tenor eminence, these muscles are three in number the abductor pollicis brevis, the flexor pollicis brevis, and the opponent's pollicis. They take origin mainly from the scaphoid tubercle, the trapezium, and the flexor retinaculum. And they gain insertion mainly to the base of proximal phalanx of the thumb. We have also seen most of the hypotenar eminence muscles. This is the opponent's digiti minimi, and we have seen the abductor digiti minimi. They also take origin from inside the palm, from the hook of hamid, and the flexor retinaculum. They gain attachment mainly to the base of the proximal phalanx of the little finger. The last of the spaces in the palm are the pore spaces found on the fingers. The following are found on layer 5. Common synovial flexor sheath, flexor digitorum superficialis tendons, flexor digitorum profundus tendons, flexor policies longus tendon, opponent's policies, Opponents dignity minimi, on a bossa, radial bossa, and a pop space. In sum, in this layer, we have exposed the following common synovial flexor sheath, tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis, tendons of flexor digitorum profundus, tendon of flexor policies longus, opponents policies, opponents dignity minimi. We have now arrived at the layer of the deep flexor tendons. There's only one deep flexor tendon, and that is the tendon of the flexor digitorum profundus. To recap, we have removed the flexor digitorum superficialis tendon and the common synovial flexor sheath. We are now seeing the deep tendons clearly. The carpal tunnel and the flexor digiti minimi, which is the last muscle of the hypothenar eminence. The deep tendon layer consists of the deep long flexors, the carpal tunnel, the palmar ligaments of the metacarpophalangeal joints, the adductor pollicis compartment containing the adductor pollicis, the plantar metacarpal artery and the deep branch of the ulnar nerve or artery. In sum, we have exposed fibrous flexor sheets and the carpal tunnel. We have now reached the adductor policies layer. To recap, we have removed the flexor retinaculum, carpal tunnel, long flexor tendons, Thenar muscles, hypothenar muscles. This is the deep branch of the ulnar nerve and artery. The palmar metacarpal arteries, adductor pollicis, its oblique head, and its transverse head. Palmar ligaments of the metacarpophalangeal joints. The adductor policies compartment, which contains the adductor muscle. The adductor layer therefore consists of the following adductor policies, deep branch of ulnar artery, medium plantar, metacarpal arteries, and palmar ligaments of metacarpal phalangeal joints. To recap, we have removed the adductor policies. We have now reached the deep palmar arch layer. 
It contains the first dorsal interruptions. Consisting of the deep palmar arch, which contains the deep branch of the ulnar artery and the deep branch of the radial artery. The deep branch of the ulnar nerve. The first palmar metacarpal artery. The palmar carpal arch. This layer, which is the layer of the deep palmar arch, contains the deep palmar arch, the deep branch of ulnar nerve, palmar carpal arch, palmar interossi, and the first dorsal interosseous muscle. In sum, we have exposed the branches of the deep palmar arch, the plantar metacarpal arteries, which are the lateral branches and then the branches of a deep ulnar nerve. We are now in a new layer called the layer of interosci and joints. And to reach this layer, we have removed all neurovascular structures. We have exposed the second, the third, and the fourth dorsal interossi. The hook of Hamid. Capitate. Pisiform. Lunate Palma radiocarpal ligament of the wrist joint Pisohamate ligament Pisometacarpal ligament In some, we have exposed dorsal interosci, some bones and landmarks such as the capitate, hook of hermit, pisiform, lunate, and also the palmar radiocarpal ligament. Bones of the hand include the carpals, metacarpals, and the phalanges. We are now in the last layer of the palm, which is the layer of bones. To recap on how to reach this layer, we had removed palmar radiocarpal ligament of the wrist joint and the dorsal interossi. The couple of bones include scaphoid, Lunate, triquetrium, and pisiform. These are bones of the distal row. The proximal row includes trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate. The metacarpals are five in number. Metacarpal 1 is for the thumb. Metacarpal 2 is for the index finger. Metacarpal 3 is for the middle finger. Metacarpal 4 is for the ring finger. And metacarpal 5 is for the little finger. The phalanges are 14 in number. Proximal, middle, and distal. For the four media digits with only proximal and distal for the thumb. In sum, we have exposed the bones of the hand, which includes the carpal bones, the metacarpal bones, and the phalanges.
Layer 10, which is the layer of bones, consists of the cabal bones, which are arranged in two rows, the scaphoid, the lunate, the traquetrum, and the piece form. Belong to the distal row, the trapezium, the trapezoid, the capitate, and the hamate belong to the proximal row. Then you have the metacarpals, which are five in number, and the phalanges, that are 14 in number. Let us now examine the various spaces and compartments that are in the palm. Let us recapitulate on the 10 different layers of the palm. 